<laughs> How you doing, man? Good, good. Yeah. Awesome. What's, what? Anything new? Uh, if you guys don't know, this is Richard Yepes from a couple episodes ago. Yes, episode 232. Two th- that's right. <laughs> <He's> Two. <laughs> <laughs> I, think you, I think you commented like on one of our feeds. is like, hey, this is good, but episode 232, that was hey, the I'm best. I'm just trying to get as many plays <laughs> on episode 232. <laughs> There's a Grammy for podcasts. I'm trying to get it that direction. There should be a Grammy, Yeah, and we should win it. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> No, so uh, something new. Yeah, I'm on this crazy diet. Oh, yeah? And I hate it. What's what's the new diet? Well, I just, you know. I like crazy diets, by the way. So I just I just finished one. Did you? I did. You look pretty good. Well, thank you. You're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> I had to shave my mustache, but it was that's part of <laughs> that was four pounds. It was right there. it was a it was a fatality of my marriage, is what that was. Uh, no, so you know. Carbs are the enemy, blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. I'm, just, I'm just trying to, like, do this whole uh, um, intermittent fasting kind of thing. Okay. Like, I hear good things. Sure. Uh, but, yeah, you know, trying not to eat after a certain time and all this other good stuff. You know, there's, uh, you know, there's, if you can watch TikTok over and over and over and over again, there's going to be 50,000 fads to watch. So, I'm just trying to take the stuff I like uh-huh. and make my own kind of diet from it. Okay. And, so, you're, you're cutting carbs and you're intermittent? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what are, what are, what is your window? So my window is like from one to four. From one to four, that's when you're eating. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's brutal. Yeah. No, you, actually, you know, it's it's actually helps because that's the time I've kind of got all the work out of the way. But then you know, one o'clock comes around and you're like, all right, we gotta get up. <laughs> <laughs> and then if I eat something like maybe in the middle, of like two thirty or something, then it'll kind of take me into the rest of the night because the kids coming back from school and they're keeping me occupied and it's kind of like a thing after that. So. Okay. So so far so good. If you talk to me next week, who knows? <laughs> so we did a 29-day fast. Okay. Where, like, no, no, like we had food. Okay. But it was, we could only have, and and really all I was having was like a small protein shake during the day. Yeah. Um, if I needed something, and I eventually got to a point where I just I just cut that out. Really. Um, but then we couldn't eat. And this, my wife and I did this together. We couldn't eat until after 5.30. Okay. And the only thing that we could have is meat and veggies. Okay. But, like, no sauces. Yeah. Just salt and pepper. That was it. Yeah. And that's... We that's kind of, like, along the lines of what I'm doing. It, yeah. I mean, it sounds very similar. Just Mine's just moving up. <laughs> <a little bit laughs> uh, have, you, have you ever heard of uh, Peter Atia? No. No. So, he might be worth checking out. He's Pe- a... Peter Atia. So, he is a physician okay. that studies longevity. And he studies the effects of long. He he actually is convinced that intermittent fasting is the key to longevity. Okay. And he, I, I don't know if he's still doing it, but he was doing it where he was doing all of his medical practice, and then he would come home and he would eat. I think it was like at six o'clock, mm-hmm. and he said it was like he, he was. It was just, it was just brutal. Yeah. It was. I mean, he was just scarfing food down. He was eating whatever he wanted. Right. But it like from like six to like eight, he could eat, and yeah. that was it. And, well, and I, you know, I, in, in our line of work, especially in my line of work where uh, you're sitting at a desk for a long time, period of time and, yeah. and uh, you're snacking a lot. Yeah. That's what I, and, and I've, cutting out the snacks has definitely helped like a page turner because you're not mm. reaching for something as much as you used to. Yeah. And if you don't know, realtors like to eat. <laughs> they like to be taking the they lunch. They like to be taking the lunch. And they, you know, there's always a networking event. Or oh, so something. That, that's why you've got the window you got. I understand now because <laughs> you want to keep the networking it's like, opportunities. Can we meet at the library? Can we, can we read some books? You know, let's go where there's no food. <laughs> let's, let's meet over a job. <laughs> you know, I've actually been thinking about doing something like that because okay. it's true. Like, realtors, you know, in this in this field, it's always networking, drinking, food, lunches. This lunch, come to this lunch. Yeah, finger foods here. Come to an open house. Finger foods. Come to. Uh, so I'm thinking about you know if I if I get pretty good on this thing, I, I think I think the hardest part of losing weight is doing it alone. Uh huh. Yeah. And I think if I get a lot of other people on board, I've been thinking about setting up some kind of. Uh, like program on you know just this whole initiative called lose weight real estate oh and then that way instead of meeting at a bar or something like that you know just hey you know let let all the agents know hey a bunch of us are going to meet at such and such park for 3k right like let's all meet and we all work out together we can network it that way bring your cards or whatnot but 
let's let's feel better just kind of work on ourselves a little bit and then we can network afterwards but i i think i think it'd be interesting you know see For how sure. many people actually you know take advantage of it <laughs> oh we i just got a, ke- a comment from kevin well it's, uh, yeah, where's kevin he goes he goes what's going on where am i <laughs> <laughs> You're not here, <laughs> right? <laughs> Slacker, man. This is like <laughs> the fiftieth million show. You're missing it. Kevin. <laughs> so I, so here's an idea for you. I, and I think if you could, if you could arrange this, right? I think, I think you would, you would dominate the real estate lending market. I think I would. Everywhere. Yeah. I think I. Th- wow, that's really loud. Yeah. It's. It has to be loud if it's and getting it, picked it, up on the microphone over and here. And it's a Honda. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not even anything worth looking at. So. <laughs> If you if you could set up the real estate fight club, mm-hmm. where you know you've you've got the Coldwell guy over here right. and the Remax guy over here, and we're gonna get together and we're just gonna watch them beat the ever living hell right. out of one another. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> one, it's gonna be good for the fitness. Yes. Two, everyone's gonna want to come see. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take your bets. <laughs> That's right. And no. Who's no. getting this listing? <laughs> one night only. <laughs> Sunday, one. Sunday, Sunday. You need you need to like throw the two million dollar listing up. <laughs> right. Whoever last man standing. That would make this business a hundred percent more interesting. Oh my gosh. If realtors had to physically fight for a listing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. I would show up for that. I'm not even. That's, that's in, pay-per-view in, stuff right there. That's that, that's going beyond, uh, you know, Fight Club. It, yeah. It's it's literally getting people I bet, involved. It, you just want to you want another viral video, don't you? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> she she kissed me at the last event, and I yeah. put it up as a clip, and it went nuts. Nice. And I said, I I I. I, I do. <laughs> well, Brandy, you gotta you gotta bring the eye candy on these things, you know. <laughs> yep. It's in the middle console. That was my wife. She kissed me. Yes. I so like what I did on the video. I uh-huh. said random woman, woman interrupts <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> interrupts interview. You know these podcasts. You it never is, know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Just random people walking up to you and kissing you. All right. Are you are you ready for these uh, these statistics? Yes. I'm oh, sorry. Did I'm you ready. need did you need something, Jojo? Say what? She just she wants to watch. She wants to be involved. Hi. Oh, there you go. It's Jojo, our fearless leader. All right, so here we go. This is the uh, Census Bureau. Yes. Released their numbers mm. on the number of people moving from states and the number of people moving into certain states. Okay. So which states received the most population uptick? So meaning how many people moved into those states, okay. and then which states? had a decrease in population awesome so i'm gonna i want to i want to put it to you see see how well you do which let's go with the top four okay which which states do you think were the top four for population increase well texas okay increase uh florida okay Florida's kind of like Texas. I'm not. I'm not going to affirm right, any right, of these right, until, right, you, right. until you get through so the list. So Texas, Florida, okay. increase, um, increase, Tennessee, okay, maybe because a couple of friends of mine just moved to Tennessee, and the last but not least, um, something interesting, maybe maybe Virginia, maybe Virginia, yeah, okay. So the the top four. Mm-hmm. Um, you weren't far off, okay. by the way. And this is based off 2022 Census Bureau data. Okay, number one is Florida. Okay. Number two is Texas. Got it. Number three, North Carolina. Okay. Number four, South Carolina. Oh, okay. Tennessee was number five. Okay. So you weren't far off there. Okay. But it it's a drastic drop off from Texas to North Carolina. So like Texas is. So Florida in 2022 saw a 1.9% increase in their population, really? which was 318,000 people, Okay, give or, give or take a few. That's a lot of retirees. Yeah, right? <laughs> I don't think it's retirees, right? Florida, I mean, Texas saw a 1.6% increase in their population yeah. at 230,000. It's actually closer to 231. Um, North Carolina was a 1.3% increase at 99,000. 
goodness. I'm not. Okay. I'm, I'm giving yeah, easy yeah, yeah. numbers because right, right, there right. there are specific numbers, but nobody cares. Yeah. And then South Carolina was a 1.7 percent increase. Okay. At 84,000. I wonder why the Carolinas though. I mean, what's? I mean, they have beaches. I mean, they got nice beaches over there. So I mean. Well, and and so I I, I think I can answer that. Yeah. By asking you if you know the top four losers. In California popular. has to be one of them. Okay, California. Uh. Uh, um, um, Washington. Okay. Are you talking about like Washington State, State or Washington D.C.? State. Okay, Washington State. Um, losers. Uh, da, 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 da. Nevada, maybe. Nevada. Okay. And uh, one of these uh, eastern ones, maybe New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Okay. So the top four losers. Uh huh. California. Okay. Was the number one loser. Got it. New York. Okay. Uh, down. I should have said that. <laughs> I was afraid to say that because it's, it's the big apple. You don't want to think them as losing people. Yep. But. And then Illinois Uh huh. and New Jersey. Okay. Those are the top four Got losers. Yeah. Cal- and so here's what's interesting. The numbers almost exactly coincide. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like if one point something left Illinois, but one point something got to Texas. Well, no, 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 week. no. Like the, the percentages are less. Okay. But the an- amount of people is almost exactly the same. Yeah. It's just, I, I can see New York, New Jersey, um, Illinois too. Um, well, so a lot of people don't, don't do Illinois, but they forget about Chicago. Right. And that's, and that's why. Chicago. And that's why. Yeah, so California lost 343,000. Right. New York lost 299,000. Yeah. And then Illinois, 141,000. Okay. And then New Jersey, 64,000. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think if you were to like take the top four and the bottom four, and I think those numbers would be almost r- like within 50,000. Right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, that, what what the craziest thing is, I guess if it just wasn't so pricey, because the, the amount of money people make isn't increasing. So, I'm, but the the way you live in New York and New Jersey is, and Chicago. Well, yeah, but like if 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 these numbers are true, right? We're like not true. Like obviously these numbers are true, but right. like we're seeing the people from California, New York, go to Texas and Florida. Right. They're able to afford a better lifestyle oh, yeah. for definitely. sure. For sure, yeah. Uh, if, if that's what's happening. We don't know for sure. One of the ones that was weird to me is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. The number six loser uh-huh. was Louisiana. Yeah, I believe that. A lot of people were leaving Louisiana. Because it's, I think, I think it's all about opportunities. And I think if you're not in Louisiana, you got a handful of big towns uh, you go there for college because everybody wants to go to LSU, but then you leave there to go do something else. Yeah. Uh, but like um, Louisiana story, if you're going to Louisiana, as soon as you leave Texas, get gas, <laughs> fill up your tank, like all the way, because in Texas you got like a gas station every other exit. In Louisiana, there's so many bridges. Yes. I I almost foolishly mistakenly. Almost ran out of gas on one of those long oh, bridges. Oh, that long bridge. And I yeah. was sweating bullets <laughs> because I just, in my head, I was waiting for another gas station to come <laughs> along. There's, there's one coming right up. <laughs> and and it, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm so spoiled in Texas. Buy like, yeah. you gas. <laughs> as soon as you pass the state line in Louisiana, you fill her up because, yeah. goodness gracious. And you could probably go from one end of Louisiana to the other on a tank of gas. You probably could, yeah. yeah. Most definitely. It depends on where you start, but yeah, you could do it. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, but like, you know, the the funny thing about Louisiana though is like once you leave Texas, like it's sprinkling. You see that? Is it? Yeah. Oh, it is. That's not cool. No, no, no. That's gonna make it interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't pick up because I'm I'm fine with it right now. But right. if it gets any heavier, I'm gonna be, get this equipment out of here. Like, what, like, like Louisiana, man, if you stop at the gas station, there's there's two things that are available in those gas stations that aren't in Texas. One oh, yeah. is liquor. Yeah. And the other one's boudin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, maybe some gambling. There's gambling oh, in yeah. the gas that's, stations. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's uh, a must. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the craziest thing. As soon as you get in Louisiana, you're like, okay, they got boudin here, alcohol. Yeah. And then, yeah, if, there's a slot machine over there, by the way. Yeah. So, I mean, it was it was surprising to me just because, like, Louisiana is cheap living. Yeah. 
Like it and, is. It, and like there's some there's some really and, pretty and parts the, of and Louisiana. The taxes are like crazy low. Yeah. Like, uh, compared to ours. So it was just weird to me. Like I mean, like, it, because if the trend is like people are leaving to go to lower taxed states mm -hmm. and more affordable states, you know, like. You know, in Florida and Texas, I mean, like, those are just, like, weird unicorns. <laughs> they really are. I mean, like, they're low tax, but mm -hmm. they also have a lot of opportunity right. in both of those states. Right. North Carolina, South Carolina, that one's the weird one to me. That, I, what I, I think so. is happening is that's, like, a halfway point mm -hmm. between Florida and New York. Right. And I think I think some people are like, well, I, I don't want to get, like, cooked. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see some snow every now and then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be. And there's mountains, and it's pretty. Yeah. Like, North Carolina is gorgeous. Yeah. No, um, I've been to Charlotte. Charlotte's pretty nice. So, and, and, like, the ones after that, I mean, like, make total sense. I mean, because after that, it's Tennessee, Georgia, Arizona, Idaho, Alabama, Oklahoma, uh, Nevada, mm -hmm. Arkansas, Montana. I mean, like, all the, all the ones after that, I'm like, okay, that makes total, makes total sense. Yeah, yeah, no, most definitely. I think, uh, you know, I had the... When I had to go to Louisiana that one time, because uh, usually you just drive through it. Um, I, I, you know, I'm licensed Louisiana. You want to loan Louisiana? I can help you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I had to help a realtor over there. And so when they were writing a contract, contract's totally different than Texas. And I'm pretty spoiled with Texas. But um, I was looking at taxes, and that, it was kind of just mind-blowing because I was kind of looking at what I'm used to calculating for people here in taxes. And then when I sent a good faith estimate to uh -huh. My buyer in Louisiana, he almost lost his mind. He was like, "Wait a minute, you got those taxes?" And I was like, "I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what are they." And I had to talk to the agent. He was like, "Man, you're, you're way overflated on those taxes." And I was like, "Well, what are they?" He's like, "They're like .55 in the area." Oh wow! He's and so it was just kind of like an eye opener. I was like, "Man, taxes are like crazy cheap in Louisiana." But I guess you gotta like pick your battles. What you want, you know? How, yeah. How much? How much money can you actually make if? You know, in Louisiana, if you're not on an oil derrick or something, you know. Uh, yes, I mean, d does Louis? Do you know? I mean, does Louisiana have like state income tax? I don't know. You don't know? I don't I, know either. They might. I mean, so they got to get money from all these gambling casinos. I know they got to be winning off of that. I, I I do know that if you're from Louisiana, you go to college for free. Oh, do you? Well, if it's a state school. I didn't know that. Yeah, I that's mean, like, pretty cool. I mean, at least that's. Don't quote me on that. That's that's the way, I know that's the way it used to be. <laughs> that's um, what I heard. Like all, my, all like pretty much all my, I, I have a lot of family in Louisiana. They're yeah. all sugarcane farmers. Yeah. And like pretty much all of them went to Louise, Louisiana State. Yeah. For free. That's awesome. And be, because they're like residents of Louisiana. Yeah. No, I mean that's 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 good. I mean, I wish Texas could get on board, but Texas has so many big name schools. It's kind of hard to do that. They're making so much money off of everything oh yeah well i mean and, and there's enough out-of-state people that want to go to texas yes. schools too yep. i mean i i think in louisiana like if you have any out-of-state people they it's lsu yeah oh yeah maybe Most tulane definitely. but like lsu is going to be pretty much the, the, the oh, location yeah. so those tigers well and and i think you told me the other day this was after we did our episode that uh, loans are like loans are up oh yeah right now right so crazy thing like and this is after our episode that we did back in january um yeah february blew up out of nowhere um just with the amount of loans we're having a, a big month uh compared to what we had probably same time last year when rates were lower um, oh really yeah so you're doing more when we're, we're probably when neck and neck uh, about the same that's nuts um because the the want you know the wants there i, I don't you know, like you think I said, it's people are just tired of waiting. They they, they thought they were going to wait out the interest rate. And I, I think happening? that's the biggest thing is like you th you thought this was going to kind of go somewhere. So maybe that one thing you said in your head is I'll wait to the new year. Right. Um, but of course, I can see everybody's New Year's resolution if you don't have one is getting home. Um, but yeah, our 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 applications, our closings, February we're we're having a huge month in February, and it's it's kind of out. Of, we we didn't predict it because we thought it was usually. For all intents and purposes, the first quarter of real estate is always the slowest because mm. we're getting out of these holiday months. And um, but there they picked up. I was pretty surprised. I hope we keep it up. I hope I hope the confidence and that's the biggest thing. I hope the confidence of buying a home is still there um, going forward. You know because rates aren't going to do anything anytime soon. Inflation, yes, has been down for the last two months, and that's what they were going for. But I don't see a drastic rate change anytime soon. Yeah. Um, because we're still kind of going through it, but I mean, yeah, I think I think the confidence of buying a house is is back to a point, mm. which is.
which is pretty good. I, I read a couple of articles that was saying there was uh, some some hopefulness in the economy, not in the sense that like rates are going to come down right, right. or that much is going to change, but that we may have hit sort of like a plateau that we're going to be on for a while. Right, right. And I, I, I think for most people, like this isn't like ideal situation like before when we could you know see something sub three from time to time on mm -hmm. an interest rate. But like this is very manageable. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And sustainable. Yeah. Like my first mortgage was six and a half and I was smitten. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was pretty happy about it. So for those of you who don't know, we're actually at a networking <laughs> event, the net. Yeah, we got we got level a level up. Yeah. Uh, and I just got here, but um, did you just uh, get here? I did. Yeah. It, like you hadn't been I, inside. Yeah. For a while? <laughs> well, I mean, I walked inside and then Jojo grabbed me. And then oh, so <laughs> I was like, yeah, I like talking. <laughs> Um, oh, Robert's showing up late. <laughs> <laughs> what was this guy moving? Robert with green light movers <laughs> showing up late to the event. What's going on? <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't not call him out with his logo right behind your head. <laughs> this guy right here. <laughs> You can't, you can't, you can't use the crutches as the excuse anymore. Right, That's right. <laughs> I know, right? That's what I told him. <laughs> he's skipping on that good foot now. That's right. He's feeling, he's feeling it. That's too funny. That's too funny. So, uh, so anyway, we're, you were, you were telling me interest rates are. Yeah. So I, you know, I, like I said, my first rate was six and a half and I was pretty smitten about it. And, and, and rates are still like around up, upper fives, low sixes. Um, and it's not it's not going to kill you. But like I always tell people, um, if you're not going to complain to me about your 22 percent credit card in your pocket. Right. That's the, thi that's the thing that bugs me. It's like, really? Like, show me your wallet. <laughs> if you're walking around with a 22 percent Apple card, I don't fight me on your mortgage interest rate. Is, that, you, is that really what Apple's charging? It, yeah. Go Goldman Sachs is pretty high on that Apple card. Dang. It's it's pretty nuts. Uh I think the only thing they got going for them is that they don't give you a yearly fee, but they okay they charge you what they charge you. Um, is that like is it like most other cards where if you don't pay it off at the end of the month, that's when the twenty two kicks in? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. But and then I'll give it to Apple if you do have an iPhone and, and those things link together automatically, which is kind of next level. But um, that app tells you, hey, pay this, <laughs> and this is what your interest is. Yeah. No. I mean, I think it's cool because. A lot of other credit card companies, you're kind of just guessing and saying, well, what if I pay half my card or what if I pay 75 percent? The way the Apple card works, if you say, look, I can't pay the full amount, but I can only pay X, it's going to say, OK, well, if you can only pay X, you're only going to pay this much interest. Right. So at least you can kind of plan for that, opposed to where Capital One, I've, I've never had a point where I was like, hey, I noticed you're only paying half of what your bill is. Right. Um, but thanks anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, C Citibank's actually pretty good about that. Really? They'll, they'll let you know because they do a lot of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <clears throat> Where it, you know, like that you can buy like a big item and it's 0% okay. for so many months. Right. But then they'll let you know like, hey, this thing is expiring pretty soon. Okay. Here's what you got left to pay yeah. in order so that that doesn't happen. No, um, then, yeah, that's good. Um, that same day 12 months financing i right. think a lot of people take advantage of that for sure yeah, yeah. no i, I mean I like we're, we're fixing to start offering it in our company for like big ticket items where people people can get zero percent interest for 12 months and it's it's because those most people like and you and you know this most people just right. don't have that kind of cash on hand right. to do those kinds of big ticket items or those unexpected items um that they need that they need to happen for their home you know, like you start thinking about, you know, like a, a ten thousand dollar air conditioner repair. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if I think anytime you can kind of do something like that, because like you said, not a lot of people have that kind of money just kind of on hand, and you could do like a six to twelve months. I, I know when I got my tires from Discount Tire, you know, I mean, right. Four sets of tire now they set you back fifteen hundred dollars. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Um, and if you're not walking around fifteen hundred dollars, or you just don't want to pay that at that point, I know, I know that. Discount tire does a 90 day same as cash kind of initiative. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's good that to know that, uh, you know, Excalibur is offering different financial packages to get its services. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> might as well. Right, right. No, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Anything else cool happening in the market right now? In the market? I mean, no. I mean, so we, 
like the great thing I like about my company is that we are a mortgage company. So they're always thinking outside the box on how to provide just different kind of mortgages to reinstill that confidence. So today we had a meeting. Um, so FHA, uh, which is a three and a half percent government loan. FHA is a uh, federal housing administration loan, 30 year fixed. So three really, really quick, three, you said three and a half. That's what you'd have to do as the down payment. Yeah. Okay. Three, so it requires three and a half percent down. Um, Today we announced that we're offering a down payment assistance to coincide with that loan, uh, where a lot of other down payment assistance have requirements for coinciding with that loan. Uh -huh. We're taking the first time home buyer off the table. We're taking the income limit off the table. So you could be a re repeated buyer, make as much as a doctor. And as long as you meet the credit requirements and all the debt to income requirements, so you, if you need the down payment assistance, we have that to offer you, and so so how much how much of of assistance are you guys offering? Up to five percent. So Seriously. We'll, we'll cover the three and a half percent down plus some closing costs. So now on on an FHA, can you only do the three and a half percent once? What do you mean? Like because I know you only get so many FHA loans in your lifetime. No, you can get an FHA. You just can't have two, and and there's a great line to that. You just can't have two FHA loans at one time because an one FHA. Time is a primary property product. Okay. Um, like you can't say, hey, I wanna buy an investment home on an FHA. Um, however, let's just say you live, uh, if you live in Florida, right, and you're making that move to Texas, um, and you had an FHA uh -huh. in Florida, but now you're coming to Texas, this is where they moved you, this is where your new job is. Um, you can get another FHA and have two at one time. It just, it's a, it's a huge distance thing, but. Yeah. But FHA, because it is a government loan, they want to strictly be a primary property product. That's, okay. that's what they're geared for. Why, why did I think you could only have, like, for some reason, 16 is sick, sticking in my head. Like, you can only have, like, so many FHAs in your, like, on no, your... No, as, as long as you, like, if I sold a home and went to get another one, you can, you can get as FHA loans many times. Really? Like, Interesting. Yeah, definitely. So, down payment assistance up to 5%. So, you guys are covering, like, a, a percent and a half. Mm -hmm above what the requirement is right so how does that work exactly so, so uh, would, would, would that would that amount then just be added back into the loan no so the great thing is, is so the down payment is three and a half percent we cover that three and a half percent on that down payment uh and then you have third-party fees you have title company title companies taking oh, so that, that extra percent and a half is in order to cover those so the extra percent and a half is going to cover those third-party fees that um coincide with your loan that we don't have control over so the good thing is is if you need someone to, uh, if you need some additional money to pay for that so where an average person would bring fifteen thousand dollars to a two and a hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan you know that just got reduced to under five grand that's, that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> so it makes home buying a lot more affordable and easy so before the show started, I was actually talking to one of the servers here. Okay. And he was he was asking me, he's like, hey, what's the, what's the show about? I was like, what's the homeowner show? And he's like, ah, I can't buy a home. <laughs> and I'm like, well, why not? And he goes, I don't have any credit. Yeah. I'm like, well, why don't you have any credit? And he goes, I don't know. I don't want to mess with that stuff. And I was like, dude, just buy a credit card. Oh, yeah. Get get, your, get a credit card, buy a candy bar mm -hmm. once a month, pay it off, and you'll have credit. Yeah. Like so, But like, what, what about people that don't have credit? So if you have what's called a zero, a true zero, they call it a, a true zero. Um, not, hey, I used to have credit, but I got out of the credit game and I had some collections and now I just don't have any credit. Right. Um, a true zero is like you've never established credit at all because like that server, he just uh, was afraid of it, didn't want to get into it or just- Which I don't blame him. Right, right. No, definitely. If you, I still think that credit awareness should be taught in our schools but <laughs> that's another topic you willing to teach that class isn't <laughs> hey I, I actually used to do uh if anybody's familiar with the pelchin the pelchin um is a foster care company here in houston uh, and they help foster kids that age out of foster care okay and i used to teach a class called the economy of me to those kids before uh -huh. they got fostered out because unfortunately um after at 18 they're gone yeah they're they're done yeah they can't get so like i mean there are assistance programs of course. but like they're they're done with yeah so so the pelchin did quite a bit they actually get you know they were able to go to college for free and then they were able to set them up with a couple of things but heck that economy piece like i said it's the economy of you it's the economy of me like they weren't getting that and i, I mm. think money is the only common denominator uh, among all of us especially if if you're an orphan and yeah about to go on on your own 
Um, but you, yeah, you need to talk to my wife about this. She she used to work with Love Fosters Hope. I don't oh, know really? if you, are you familiar no, with them? No, mm-hmm. It's a, it's a it's a foster care organization, okay. and they actually they actually have a house not far from here. Okay, uh, where they offer free housing to kids who have gone through their programs that have aged out of foster care. Okay, so like they have. A so place it's there. after their yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, That's awesome. And so like education and mentoring is a big part of what they do. And okay. like you're you're absolutely right. I mean like they they just don't have life skills. Mm-hmm. Because they've been institutionalized for so most of them right. have, for so long, right. or have been passed around from house to house, and they just they've never had the chance to develop those skills. Mm-hmm. So someone like you that can come in and actually teach those. those yeah, skills. it was it, it was a great class. I mean, because it, it was a two week class, act, and it was a two week class, and so um, again, we had all the study material. They had all these handouts. They you know we gave them everything. We made it fun. It wasn't just like, hey, learn this and we'll do this, it, you know. And the, at the end of the two weeks, we had what's called a real life, uh, uh, a real life um, activity where we would have different booths set up in the gym, mm-hmm. and each booth was cars, our um, housing, our like so, and we would give everybody a handout. They didn't know what their, uh, they didn't want, know what their job was, so we'd say, okay, here's all the handouts, and they'd say, okay, well, I'm a nurse and I make this much money. And so they would, <laughs> they, they would have this limit they would have to stick to and then go into the gym and, and you had to have housing, you had to have a, your transportation. And so what the awesome thing was is that you give them all these limits, especially on the cars, you know, it has, you know, you have your Corvettes, so right, your, yeah. your Honda, and then, and then like there's a place for pets and there's a place <laughs> for like going out. And so it's so funny because they're going through each one and they realize how much all this stuff costs. And then they're backtracking. They're like, okay, well, maybe I don't need the Corvette. Maybe I, <laughs> maybe I do need a bicycle or a bus pass. And so, like, I always ask, this is my favorite question when after it's all said and done. I was like, how many people started off with a dog when it all started? And everybody's training there. I was like, how many people have dogs now? And everybody's like, right, they're like those things are expensive. <laughs> <They're> just, <laughs> gotta feed it. So <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it was pretty cool to do that uh, and just kind of just eye-opening experience with those kids uh but it was really good any anytime you can take young kids through like a budgeting sort of situation yeah i guess it, it tends to be eye-opening like here's your rent here's your groceries right here's your utilities yeah here's your taxes here's the i mean here's all of it mm-hmm. like and and sort it out yeah like and you know it, it's funny how conservative they become like and i don't mean like politically right like i mean just like no with their own money yeah i mean i mean when it when you kind of have your own i mean i did with that with my son uh, when he started to work, I was like, look, I don't care what you do with this and this, but 10% of your check needs to go here. Yeah. I was like, no. And even now that he's in the Marines, um, I set him up an IRA. I was like, okay, this much money a month has to go into here. Yeah. Um, because my parents never told me about this stuff. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I think, unfortunately, they just didn't know. And I'm, I'm glad that I can just say, look, this is what you got to do. And if I'm not here to make you a millionaire, you're going to be a millionaire on your own. Um, but this is how you have to do it. And I think now that he's it's being deducted from his check and things like that, he, yeah. like we'll go somewhere and he'll be like, oh, maybe I don't need that. Maybe I don't need those Oakleys. <laughs> 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 can we go to Walmart and get yeah, those? Yeah, but, but if, you, if you can set it up on, on like an automatic withdrawal. Oh, yeah. I mean, like we, if you do that as a young person, mm-hmm. one, you're, you're developing the discipline. Right. Two, it's like, okay, now it just becomes routine, and like, you don't even notice it over time because it's always being taken out. It's just, it's never present in your bank account. Of course. To, yeah. to, to, to sight, be a temptation mind. to right. like, well, I'll skip it this month. Yeah. You know, whatever. It's, it, you know, it's, it's setting up that automation for future wealth. Right. No, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, again, like, I, I wish it was something that was told to me, and but when I finally found out about it, it's kind of like the eye opener. Man, why am I doing this the whole time? Yeah. Um, I was wasting on women, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> except for the one, right? <laughs> except for the one. Uh, how was your Valentine's Day? Oh, dude! So we, uh, my wife doesn't like Valentine's. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> She's a keeper. <laughs> so we 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 have some fun traditions that we do. So I don't even think I've told this story on the on the show before, but one of our first fights as a couple. Nice. Was over Valentine's Day, um, and we <laughs> what were, do you mean you'll like it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Wait, what's what? a five stores? <laughs> well, it was it was when we were dating, and she we were we actually had a long distance relationship. She was living in Dallas, and I was okay. living in Houston, and 
uh, I Valentine's Day was coming up, and I was making a fuss about having to do anything about it just because I was stupid. And she was like, well, why is this a big deal? And I was, and so I came up with this really dumb thing mm-hmm. that I said to her, which was, <laughs> look, you making me celebrate Valentine's Day is like me making you celebrate Arbor Day as if Arbor Day was important to right, me. Right, I, was right. like, I was like, if Arbor Day was really important to me and I made you celebrate it, this is what this feels like. It's right. like you making me celebrate this. So after we got engaged, do you know what day she picked for our wedding? <laughs> Arbor Day. Arbor Day. Arbor nice. Day. Yeah. So every year on Valentine's <laughs> Day and our anniversary, uh-huh. do you know what she gets? Trees. Trees. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, on man. Valentine's Day, I gave her a peach tree. Nice, nice. <laughs> and, and she loves it now. It's 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 sweet and it's romantic. It's the ongoing joke. It's it's the ongoing joke. Nice. So we and we have a we actually have a pillow that stays on our bed all the time, and it's uh what is it? how does it go? Oh, marriage. It, it it's it, it's a saying. It says marriage is all about winning. Yeah, and that's that's the that's one of the ways I win. Yeah. Is <laughs> I did who's, something really who's dumb. Winning today? It, yeah, that's right. That's right. When when I was young, I did something dumb, but here's how I'm winning now. Right. Because right. because of that stupid thing that I did. So, so I I, I bef- after we talked back in January, there was something about you I did not realize. Yeah. I did not realize you'd been a fireman. Yes. How long were you a fireman? Eleven years. Were you really? Yeah. Was it was it uh, Houston Fire Department? Uh, Cy Fair. Cy Fair. Fire Department. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I I I got in as a firefighter and uh. Um, yeah, uh, December 28th, and this what is going on with this rain? I know, it's like starting to come. Um, December 28th was my last shift, uh, 2022. Uh, oh, wow, so yeah. like pretty recently. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I was, so for the first part of my, my, my career, I was just a standard pipeman firefighter, and then for the, like, the last half, I was an EO engine operator. Okay. Uh, so I got to, I got to drive those nice big trucks. You got the big wheel in the back. Honk and <laughs> tell people to get out of my way, and. So, uh, I, so as as far as like a, a home structure question, yeah. because I imagine this is something you experience. What is, as far as fire is concerned, like what's the most vulnerable place in your home? Uh, believe it or not, um, what we call it in the fire service, and uh-huh. if there's a beep, let's get that beep. The shitter fan. Oh, oh, like the exhaust fan. Mm-hmm. The, because people turn them on and never turn them off. Well, it's not only that. Uh, it it it's. The motor in that is not like an industrial motor that you think it would be. And then plus, you have to understand that thing's sucking dust and all kinds of whatever. And combustibles. So, combustibles. <laughs> and, and so, like, when that fan goes out, um, the, you know, that's nothing but attic space above it. And so, when that fan goes out or has electrical whatever, um, and y'all don't, you know, nobody really pays any mind, you know, they'll they'll – They'll empty out the lint, you know, in the washer and dryer, and they'll 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 do the air ducts. They'll get all that stuff out of there. But that one place, they just think it's a well-oiled machine, and <laughs> and they don't clean it, and they just that mach- that that fan that in that motor assembly is not, you know, it's it's not a GE. It's not going <laughs> to last you the rest of your life. And so we get a lot of, unfortunately, we get a lot of house fires that start in that area. Are they smoke? Are they cause, you know, they set off fire alarms. So, you know, aside from the obvious, hey, the kitchen and, you know, do this and the, you don't know how to put a grease fire. Yes, that's always one of them. But which, uh, I mean, just back up to that one real quick, because I think that's an important one to tell you. Right. If you don't know how to put it out a grease fire. Yes. Do not use water <laughs> on a grease go. fire. Do not use water just because water evaporates and then it spreads in that grease and yeah it's it we've seen a lot of that as well I, w- I would imagine if you're in the kitchen one of the best things to use would be like a sack of flour yes that that, that works perfect okay. or, or just throwing the lid on it uh sometimes if you have that lid nearby and it, it starts to flame up on you just because you just have it too hot and if you throw a lid on it it's going to kill itself yeah uh because you're taking away the oxygen you're taking away that that one piece that it needs to survive and and so flour is good, uh, throwing a lid on it, or just calling your fire department if you're completely scared and getting out of the house. Yeah. I mean, because grease fires can, I mean, like, they can get pretty oh, no. big really quick. Oh, they can get pretty bad. And you have to understand everything in your kitchen or everything in your house nowadays is combustible. It's not like the homes that, you're, you know, we probably grew up in that everything's made out of wood and it's all sturdy and there's no chemicals in it. Uh, you know, if you think about your kitchen right now, what's above it? Well, you got a plastic ventilating fan and plastic here and plastic there and 
um, the fluorescent lights, you know, all that stuff melts. Um, and once it starts melting, I mean, that, it combusts. Yes. I mean, like it, it catches fire and then it spreads. Oh, yeah, most definitely. So, so yeah, so the, just kind of one thing to kind of keep. Uh, and also, if you don't have a fire extinguisher in your house, why not? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you can get them at Costco anywhere, really, Walmart. Uh, you know, get a little one. Uh, and, and the great thing about the fire extinguishers you buy at the store is they're chemical-based. Um, they're not like the fire extinguishers you're kind of seeing like big industrial buildings. They're chemical based. So if you do get a grease fire, those are perfect as well. It's going to make a little bit of a mess, but at least you're going to save your house. Yeah. Uh, so just throw one underneath the sink and hopefully you never have to use it. But I mean, are the, are the newer one. fire extinguishers lasting longer than some of the, like, like if you have a fire extinguisher in your kitchen from like 1984, right? I mean, you probably need to upgrade. <laughs> Right, well, I mean, <laughs> right, right. But are, are the newer ones lasting longer? So those those dry chem ones do last a little bit longer. Okay, uh, just because of the settlement, you know, like uh, you don't have to go in there and shake it every once in a while. But um, it's not; they may not be full strength when you initially get them, as far as a spray is concerned. But it's going to come out of there. Um, but I always I always use the turning back the clock scenario for all my fire stuff. So when you know when it's Pay, when it's daylight savings, when you move your clock forward and move the clock back, check your fire detectors and check your fire extinguishers because you're only doing it, you know, twice a year. It's not hurting anything. Hey, I'm moving my clock, and here are all the things I have to do in those initiatives. Let's check the fire extinguishers. Let's check the um, fire detectors, and then you can move on with your day. But, it, you know, it doesn't really hurt to set those two dates as a reminder. Yeah. So on, on average, how long should those things be lasting? Uh, well, fire extinguishers, you know, Batteries usually last about a year. Uh, if or in some fire extinguishers, not fire extinguishers, uh, fire uh, detectors usually the batteries last about a year. The good ones uh, are connected to the wiring in your house, uh, so they they're ongoing. You just might want to just clean them, vacuum them out, make sure they're not have any dust or anything else like that. Or the dust will prevent them from. Well, the dust will like set off a false trigger. In oh, some okay. So you just want to make sure that there's no dust and things like that, because you know you don't want a false trigger, but. Yeah, I mean, as long as you do it, just kind of maintenance. I mean, uh, they, they should last for a while, uh, a good while. I haven't really seen one kind of go out. I mean, I think when they start turning yellow because of the plastic, you might want <laughs> you might want to replace them at that point in get, time. But get a little age on them. Just give them the maintenance they need. <laughs> give them some love. <laughs> <laughs> well, any anything else you wanna you wanna let everybody know about? No, I mean, uh, uh, you know, just uh, if, if we're not part of this group. You know, the whole reason why I'm here today is we're uh, this this networking group is uh, the net. Awesome. Yeah, all small businesses, yep. uh, you know, me being a loan officer, you know, my company's nationwide. It's, you know, next mortgage is small town. So, you know, the great thing about this, the this group of small businesses is that we're just trying to grow. We're trying to provide services to you, whether it be exterminating or, or you know, you know, affordable air care or plumbing and things like yeah. that, um, you know. We want to provide that best service, and I think when you get word of mouth, I think when someone refers you somebody and says, hey, you need to call this guy for the such and such reading, I think it goes a lot further than you Googling yourself. For sure, um, yeah. And so that's that's all we're trying to do here tonight is just, you know, network and meet new people. And that way when I'm at a closing or someone, you know, and I and I talked to JoJo about this yesterday. I, I, I went to a closing on Monday. And my buyer specifically, he was like, hey, I'm new. He, he just first time home buyer. He moved to Texas and he doesn't know an exterminator. He doesn't know a mover. He doesn't know, um, you know, so me as a loan officer, the great thing is I'm going to start providing this nice little PDF pamphlet or, or like closing package. So I can say, look, here are all the people I affiliate with and mm -hmm. you can call them if you need these services. And I think that's going to go a long way with our group because it's going to be able to um, let my buyers know, hey, if you need a mover to move into the new house or if you need someone to help you do plumbing or whatnot or, you know, with your home, here's a group of people that are already vetted because they're part of this group. They network with me, and, and, and uh, I think that's going to help a lot of my buyers. Cool. Man, I appreciate you sitting down with me. Oh, man, I anytime. You anytime want, you, you want, need a third wheel. <laughs> Kevin's the when third Kevin wheel. When Kevin gets sick, he's you know, the third I'm wheel. In, <laughs> <laughs> Every, everyone else is way above him. <laughs> <laughs> the guy works for peanuts. That that, guy. That's right. <laughs> well, do, do you think you could rustle me up somebody? I'll uh, go find you someone. Find me, all right. Yep. 